tell me a little bit about yourself and your background in IoT. So I came um, from a web development and design background, um, and that I moved into flash development. Um, and after f uh, quite a few years of doing that, I moved towards mobile development. Uh, and in the last couple of years, I, I, I followed um, the Internet of Things quite mm -hmm. a bit. Um, and when I saw data visualization was starting to become quite a big thing, yeah. because of my background in Flash, I thought, well, that's, that's a great entry point for me. Right, right. Um, so that, that's kind of uh, how I got to get involved in IoT. Um, I, uh, I live in London, and um, I recently started uh, a website called iotdataviz.com. Nice. Um, so that is more just to be a kind of a exploration of all the tools that are available, um, but also uh, to release um, articles and uh, possibly interviews about data visualization and the platforms and tools, etc. Nice, nice. So it's a good resource. Yes. Growing, yeah, a growing, a growing resource. Well, why don't we, why don't we start from the basics, and, and why do data visualization at all? Okay, so I think at the moment a lot of uh, consumers, uh, business people, governments are starting to realize the, the the big potential that is hidden within the data. Um, but I think we need to look at um, what is currently happening in the world, uh, the whole Internet of Things um, exploding. Yeah. at the moment, right. um, whether that is, if we even want to look at social media and people's interaction with that, likes, um, uploading content, yeah. sharing things, yeah. um, they are getting aware of how their actions are, um, let's say, repre represented uh, with, uh, in, in statistics, even though they're not from that background. They're, they're starting to get a bit of, bit of uh, um, an idea of that. And now, if you take it a step further, if we introduce wearables, then you see, okay, people are very much engaged in that side of things. So, um, because it's their health, they're yeah. monitoring themselves and that, that kind of thing. Zoom out a bit further and we're looking at a city. And, okay, that's quite a jump, but yeah, yeah. that is true. And um, all the, 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 the problem areas that are in, within cities mm -hmm. that are uh, IoT has got the potential to address a lot of these and make it run smoother, saving costs and that kind of thing. Hmm. So to answer the question, um, data visualization allows um, us to, to look at the actual data and um, explore it in a way that, that is understandable uh, to, to most people. Okay. And um, what it could do is, is for example, uh, make uh, things that are not non-obvious, quite clear, um, aggregate different data sets together and show mm -hmm. you vi visually how that works together. Um, so this is, is part of the, the tool set in order to, to gain the insights that people then use to make business decisions or health decisions, etc. So, so paint a picture for us. Um, is it you're looking at a screen and it's a three-dimensional model that you're rotating? Is it animated? What is the process actually? Okay, so the process, um, it very much depends on the domain. Okay. Um, because IoT is broad, you know, and, and I, I felt when I first went into it, it, it is daunting because you, you've got all these different yeah. verticals and all these different problem domains. Um, and the solutions kind of reflect that. So um, there is, I mean, the traditional way to do data visualization is you would first look at is, uh, who's your audience, you know, as in design. It's like, who's your, who's your target audience? Um, and, and that is it's important because you are, if you're doing some uh, visualization within a company, you know, that's different from doing an open um, visualization for um, the public, for sure. example. So I would say that's the first thing, the first step. And then after that is um, what is it that you're trying to, to, to say? What's, okay. the, what's the function? Okay. Um, those, those two are quite important. Uh, things like budget constraints, um, of course, is, is, is important as well. Um, but moving beyond, that's, that's the initial before you actually start to do anything. Then you need to look at the data itself and, and see what you have, um, what's the data you've got to work with, is it correct, is there anything missing, mm -hmm. um, 
do you need to... This even to, before you're visualizing it. Exactly. You're that's that's mm -hmm. just looking at, at the data itself and, and trying to see where is there interesting properties that mm -hmm. you could that you could use mm -hmm. for your fu for this specific fu um, problem that you want to address okay um, so so once you've done that then you can actually start to to um, explore the data um, visually now this is not the, this will not be um, the final product this is just to you're analyzing it in a visual way okay. to see uh, okay w because a lot, of, a lot of the value that comes from visualization is the fact that it's non-obvious. Uh, it's, it's sometimes it's just data. So you, won't, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't know. Uh, and once you start to visualize it, you see, oh, wow, there's an outlying, uh, outlier over there or, 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 or things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So after you've done that, you will get a good idea of in, in your data set what's important, what's not then you, you actually start to say, okay, this is, this is perfect for the, for the function or the, the purpose. Now let's choose the correct uh, visualization type okay. to use. Okay, got um, it. And that will then be also an iterative process because mm. it's a design yeah. process. So um, you, you'll, you'll go through multiple permutations to, until you get to the right, um, the right visualization that tells the, the story the best way. Okay. And it's not just about stories. I mean, it's, it's, I know storytelling is a big part of data visualization, but it could also be for exploratory purposes or, mm. or, or that, that kind of thing. With, at this, this phase, you, you really want to look at what, are you, uh, what, what the visualization comprises of um, things like colors, uh, more design elements, um, annotations, what are you using, um, mm -hmm. all those things are, are important and, and trying to make it as clear to the purpose as possible. Okay. So that, that's kind of a brief okay. outline. So, so what I'm hearing you say is you need to first you know, look at the problem you're trying to solve, make sure the data is um, up to the task, it's, sure. it's, it's complete and so forth, and then you're choosing different visualization Templates. I don't know if that's a good way of saying it, or different types of visualization to put your data through. Yeah, and then you look at it. So um, I want I want you to, to give us an example. You know, like, like what would be an example, and then and then and then maybe these visualizations. I, I'd like to understand them a little bit. The different types of visualizations as well. Okay. So um, let's say this this is maybe quite a large example, but. Uh, you would, we would deal with traffic and weather data okay. within yeah. a city, yeah. for example. Um, also, some of the the camera camera data and that kind of thing. And you you overlay that on a three dimensional model of the city. This is, by the way, is something is a, is a commercial product that's available mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's being used um, mm -hmm. and deployed at the moment. Okay. So your data would be. I mean, this is quite on a big scale, but y you would see, okay, is the data coming in? Is it correct? Uh, does it relate to mm -hmm. the, the problem? Mm -hmm. And then you would, you, you would aggregate that in some way. Um, what does it, that mean? So you would, you would um, put it together, overlay it um, okay. over this 3D right. uh, Got it. representation. But also, um, I think this is where it gets interesting because it, it, <laughs> It's, it's quite complicated, different streams of information. Once you put it on a, a dashboard of some kind, you, you mm -hmm. then start to see, oh, okay, right. here's something interesting. Right. Right. I, I never thought that that would, I mean, you know, I'm now yeah, hypothetical, yeah. would yeah. influence the traffic, for example. Sure, sure, sure. So. Okay, okay. And so then that's what I'm wondering. Is it, a, is it always a geometric mapping onto something? Is it the data itself could be the geometry in itself? Or what are we looking at usually? Well, because I mean, that's a great visualization. I mean, sure. a three dimensional model, you map on top of that three dimensional model, and you can see, yes. oh gosh, why is that purple over there and everything else is yellow? Sure. Just making up. No, I mean, it, it could be very, very simple. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be streaming data that's coming in from some device. Okay. And, uh, oh. or, or so just graphing it then? Yeah. Okay. It, it could be uh, it could be as simple as that. It all depends on what is the problem, you know. Right. You you always have to take it back and 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 also what is the level of your audience. So that's why it's important because if you're presenting something to um, <laughs> uh, some a, a group of data scientists that you you know you would you would be you could go quite low. Yeah. Right? Whereas yeah. if if it's general public, they they don't have any idea. Right. Right. So you. you that is what makes it also exciting because it's about representing some 
some of these abstract concepts as well. Yeah, no, exactly. That's, that is what you're doing. Right? Yeah. You're representing these, yeah, these abstract into some visualized, some visualization. Um, what are the steps then? What, if you want to take us through the mechanics, you've kind of talked about mm -hmm. it a little bit already, but maybe just again walk us through the mechanics of what are you doing here? What are the steps? Okay, so as as I said, you, you need to, to to make sure that you know yeah. um, who it is for, um, and what the purpose is, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, so that'd be like the fidelity of the data. How much? Sure. How, yeah. How much detail do you want to put in there? How low level? E exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and that's that's a really good point. Is is um, the resolution of the data? How much do you want to? How much are you are you dealing with here? Do you need to reduce it? Right. Um, and and then you, you get into this phase where you, you're actually looking at the data itself to make sure that it's got everything that you need. Right. Um, right. And and also it will it possibly will have more. So you, you, you wouldn't use all the information. You would right. then go and find the bits that are relevant okay. and um, you know, extract that and, and, and then build upon that. Um, and then after that step, you, you go into this phase where you are actually um, exploring it to see which parts, have I got it right? Is these, are these the, the most important elements mm -hmm. or uh, properties? And then after that, you say, OK, we've got it. This, this will tell mm. this is fit for purpose. Now let's find the best possible. People hate to say the best because there is no best, but um, the most clear um, representation for our purpose. Now, you mentioned telling a story, which I found was intriguing. What, what, does, that in, what does that mean in the context of data visualization? So um, a lot of times you, will, you might have, uh, after this, uh, analysis phase, you, you might find um, something that, that um, it's uh, some pieces of the, um, uh, the puzzle <laughs> or, or uh, yeah. some realization that the visualization gives to you. And this can then lead, especially if you're dealing with time, uh, time series data. Okay. So okay. You are, you've got things change over time. And right. this is especially important for right. IoT right. because a lot of it is location-based, uh, um, you know, that time kind of time-based data. Yeah. So with things changing, and that's mm -hmm. where the value lies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that um, uh, things like population movements and uh, you know weather patterns, that kind of mm -hmm. thing, it, it really then you can represent uh, represent that visually, and, and it, it paints quite a strong picture, and, and mm. it, it allows you to tell the story. Mm. But you've got to be careful with that as well to not, because um, you can, you, if you, I don't know the exact, you can beat the data until it tells the story you want. So right. you have to, uh, have to be kind of unbiased yeah. and, um, you know, hopefully take a, a good journalistic approach towards yeah. Yeah. what you're doing. So, so the story then is generally a temporal based story is kind of what's happening over time? Sure, yeah. sure. So that uh, makes sense. Yeah. I mean, there, there's there's quite a few examples, um, uh, good examples. Uh, I can't now remember the the one about um, uh, one specific one, but th th there is yeah, there is a few. Yeah. So you, you so is is it maybe then is it formed in is it put into the form of an animation then is that is that kind of yes. So so you would use animation to 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 tell your story yeah. and um, to indicate the change, um, and 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 that is it can be quite effective. Uh, um, an effective tool. Again, you need to be careful because you don't want to create the wrong response. And I think that that that's where a lot of the good or bad visualization is in the interpretation yeah. of it. Or is it? Is it uh, well, if excludes, it, is excluding certain data and emphasizing exactly. other data. Exactly. You could you could bend the, yeah. the purpose and and or or you know um, yeah. bend it towards what you want to say so uh, i don't think that's anything new no. but it's just it, maybe it's maybe when you see it visually sure. maybe it's more powerful so maybe it's reinforcing the fib to a certain extent in a, in a more stronger Could way be. i don't know yeah but why don't we talk about tools like what what's the technology what are some technologies what are some tools that are used for doing this for doing the visualization okay. so the, uh, as i've said before it, it very much and for iot is is um kind of problem or domain specific. Mm -hmm. So the, the example of the 3D city that I yep. mentioned, that is, that's a real, a real platform, real product out there. There's actually more than one. 
and some deal with urban planning, for example. Okay. Um, related to that, you've got uh, geo and map based tools. Yep. There's a quite a few out yep. there, okay. including ones that allow you to work with satellite imagery and, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So really, uh, really astounding that we, you can access that kind of um, information. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, a lot of these you have to pay, but still you've got the ability to access that. Um, and so with the map-based uh, visualizations, that's where, you know, uh, um, sensor uh, location aware data becomes really, really, right. really valuable. Right, right. Um, and it's surprising how many different tools there are available. Um, for doing geospatial For doing that kind of thing. And, and also open source tools. So, so okay, you, you, you do have your traditional uh, data visualization tools that deal more on the financial side of things. Which, yeah. um, more like BI stuff, right? I mean, exactly, exactly. Which is a little bit less sophisticated. It, or, yes, well, it, the thing I think is not necessarily maybe that it's mm. the customizability of it. Okay. Um, you know, uh, also... Uh, the learning curve for, for some of these tools, what you, what you can or cannot do, mm -hmm. what kind of interactivity does it allow mm -hmm. or does not allow? Mm -hmm. um, is it web-based? Is it a standalone platform? Is it free or do you have to pay? So, you know, all of these are, are, are considerations to take. I must say, um, some of the, uh, you know, then you've got your languages like uh, Python, R, and also JavaScript, which is, I mean, it, there's loads of libraries out there, um, and, and, and rightfully so, because of all the, you know, the website of things and, and it being so popular after Flash died. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. so uh, Another um, reason why you made me move down. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, th that is exciting for me because you can, the things that people can build for free mm. now, mm. and if you combine that with um, uh, the ability to buy hardware for cheap and program that like Arduino. And um, I'm, I get very excited about that side yeah, of things. No, because it's pretty compelling. I think what kids are growing up with today, building robots, building satellites, I mean, that, that I think we underestimate how they perceive the world. Um, growing up with iPads, iPhones, sure. and, and um, you know, Visualized. smartphones, yeah. all yeah. of that stuff, apps. Yeah. Um, so I think that uh, that's an exciting intersection. Um, and I'm not sure if people yet realize how big it could be um, from that perspective. You know, um, uh, how many designers you've got out there of whatever type. And um, with data science gaining such popularity now, mm. and rightfully so, mm. uh, there's definitely there's a, there's a, a big need. I yeah, think. no, that's interesting because I didn't really think about it that way. But what you're saying is applying the design uh, sensibility sure. to science in yes. a sense, and that's kind of where you came from then, in a way. Exactly, right? yeah. in a way, yes. Yeah. Um, because also, I mean, uh, um, for me personally, um, if you worked on flash projects, uh, mostly that would be advertising. So yeah. it or would web design. Or, or yeah, but it, it would a lot of times would be re revolving around um, selling some product. So uh, I think this now now you've got meaning behind right. that, and right. that that's really really exciting. Yeah, yeah. Well, that is exciting. Where can um, where can our viewers find out more about you and uh, what you've been doing? Okay, so um, you can go and visit um, iotdataviz.com. Yep. Um, Good so place. Th that would be and. Um, you can you can look me up on Twitter. It's um, uh, yeah. uh, at b a r b o t h a. So bar Bota. Okay. Um, and yeah, I'd love to hear from people and and especially on IoT database to just as I'm saying, it's a growing it's a growing platform. So please feel free to to connect with me. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. And I'll put the, both those uh, those links in the link and then the address in the show analysis notes. Excellent. Thank you very much Thank for you. having me. Thank you.